intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about the X Borg faction and freebooters and everything in between with a focus on how quickly you can progress through the rep and through the game here, free to play and through spending. So, with this being such a integral part to how the game is going to play for a lot of players who are moving up now. So this starts at level 38 when you unlock the X Borg faction and you can start going after the freebooter hostiles, which for most people is one of the best things this game has added, period. Not just like, hey, in the past year, but like ever, one of the best things were the freebooter hostiles, allowing us to complete more things at once by taking advantage of one hostile that counts for many. So as you can see, everything with an X Borg will count. Now, there are things that we do argue need to be added to this. We actually talked about this with the game design team last month, but like Hostile Hunter and Hostile Harbinger, you know, these things should probably automatically count. That said, this is like a premier go-to huge time saver in the game. And that's important because the rest of the X Borg has not become a time saver. If anything, has become a time sink. And understanding how that works and how quickly you progress through it, I think is pretty important. That's what I want to talk about today. So you can see that I've got my pylum out in a system to grind this hostile. This is going to help me complete my dailies, and this is something I normally do. Now, why am I particularly punching up to 53s? Well, that logic's pretty basic, because the 53s have the ability to drop a Nova Blueprint, which super, super, super small chance of that happening, but there's a chance of it happening. So that's just where I happen to grind. But realistically, I'm just trying to create or complete my dailies. And then from my dailies, what that's going to give me beyond just the completion of other tasks is also going to reward me with what I need rep wise to level up. So one neat thing that we have here is a bunch of nerds that play Star Trek Fleet Command. Shocker, I know there's tons of tons of nerds. But what I want to focus on is showing y'all again how quickly you can rep progress. So we'll switch the screen real quick. I have this chart. Now this can be found in my Discord and the channel you want to be looking for is the Volunteer Chart channel. You need the FCFC role to see it, but you can grab this overall spreadsheet. This is one of the tabs in the x Borg Factions, Zindi, et cetera, spreadsheet. But I want to show you the time to progress through this arc and through this loop. Now, with this rep, I currently have it set to your level 40 and you're not doing anything except just your dailies. And that's the top left quad right there. So we're just literally doing our dailies, getting our commons and our rep, and that's it. All we're doing is freebooter dailies. And with this, you can see that if you started from a current rep of zero, it would take you 1,040 days to complete or max out the rep. And then of course, in that time frame in 30 days, you would earn about 26,000 common export credits. Now there are four different types now. You got common, uncommon, rares, and epics. We're going to cover all that in this calculator and talk about it. But that's where I wanted to start. So if you just hit level 38, you want to start doing that right now and work through your progressions. But as you can tell, it's going to get more and more valuable as you can do more and more things. But before we get too deep into that, number one is you need to go do your x -Borg daily. So go out and do those. Like go grind your x -Borg faction. But let's take a look at the faction itself. And let's talk about what matters here. Because the first thing is favors. Favors are always you know, important. They're always valuable. What favors actually are the most valuable? I think is a great conversation to have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have that up on the side, but also I'm going to bring this up so that y'all can see the cost of what we've found so far. Shout out to Jules and Blue who manage this as well as we've got literally like three or four dozen volunteers who are always sending in information. So greatly appreciate those who help with these type of projects so that people can come on YouTube and just see it and not have to do the work themselves. It is greatly appreciated. So in terms of favors for the export faction, even as a low level, when you start looking into favors for 40 plus, the number one thing that you want to focus on is the particle beam delay, which is going to be very important for your primary Zindi hostile. Then you're going to want to focus on Zindi escalation. And this is where our recommendations have changed a little bit because we have a lot of good favors. It's important to know what favor costs what. So uncommons, rares, commons. And you can see at the very top here, we have several that cost just normal commons like the particle beam delay. The Zindi Escalation, the first two levels, are regular common credits that you would normally maybe use for research, but you can use for these. Now, to be clear, I'm going to say you are going to be able to get further funding of your common credits. So don't feel like you have to start ignoring the export research tree. Just bear with me for a little bit. If you come down here to the, like explore part, uh, parts plunder, which I'm not saying get, you also would only spend commons 
on that. So you will have the option, okay, do I wanna keep collecting my commons? Do I wanna spend them on favors? And more than anything, you're gonna to wanna to start with these favors that we just talked about, Particle Beam Delay and Zindi Escalation. Then after that though, you're actually gonna switch it up. The third most important thing I think from getting from the Xborg store is the Enterprise NX-01. Many of you might go, why? What is so important about the NX-01? Now, whether you choose to purchase it or not, it's completely up to you. But in terms of having a free-to-play path day one, is it worth going after? In my opinion, is absolutely yes. And here, let me show you why. So the NX-01, as a just a ship by itself, is super valuable because it's going to allow you to hit a new type of hostile. But I want you to see the chart and the calculator that we have. So this is how long it would take you to progress through the rep if all you did was collect your dailies. All right, let's say now you're going to complete your Zindi Scrap. And we're going to just do one day, one chest of Zindi Scrap every day. Just one chest. One. That's it. All we're doing is one chest. If you had the NX-01 at level 40, you're able to do this generally every day now. Um, there's some variants there. And these are not easy hostiles. But bear with me. Zindi Scrap, you see that's going to knock up our 30-day rep earnings from 7,500 to 45,000 in a 30-day period. Also knocks down the time to max out this faction to 174 days from scratch, which is huge. And that's just pulling the one chest, and that's a level 40 player. You're also going to notice that the common X Borg you get goes from 26,000 to 33,000. More importantly, look at the uncommons. You go and get 6,700 around-ish per month as a level 40, about 500 rares and 124 epics, where you weren't really getting any before. Now let's add the NX-01 into this. Literally a tier one, NX-01 jumps in. You see our rep goes up to 45,000. That's big. So we take that off. It stayed there, but I'm sorry. Is the next thing, the uh, commons jump up to 42,000. The uncommons jump up to 18,000. The rares jump up to 13,000. So that's how much it's able to add to you because the new hostiles and the new exchanges that it has. The, the aquatic exchange, the scrap trade, and then you have the risky slash safe turn ins. And I've only got these safe ones turned on, not even counting the risky, which if you get the riskies to roll, you'll see that they greatly increase the amount that you're getting. So again, this is understanding or expecting you have a basic understanding of how the store is set up, but this is kind of like the, hey, here's how you can progress faster and how the numbers start at the end. But let's back out of that real quick. Let's look at something else, right? All right, first off, where do these hostiles, like where are they and how do they pay out, right? I think. That's big. We know where the freebooters are. We know how to operate around the freebooters. At least I hope y'all have gotten a good idea of how to operate around the freebooters here. But part of Xborg is also the Zindi run. So to do that, let's talk about the baseline hostiles. So this game, right or wrong, doesn't want you doing the 34s. They believe this should start at 40 plus. So because of that, that's where I'm going to start with the chart. But you can technically go after the 35s and do a much slower grind if you're unable to beat the 40s right now i will reiterate and i've said this before if you cannot beat the 40s please reach out to myself or literally a ton of people on the discord because we, we probably can make that happen i promise you we got we have 39s we're beating 40 so it's not common but it is possible and if you're a 40 41 42 especially who's struggling well it might just be a crew change that does it for you but anyway here is the loot and how it pays out in terms of base costs this isn't running one of the crews that you'll see me run, which is a loot crew, to get more from those terms of hostiles. This is just straight running it, and this isn't even counting the trader hostile. This is just how much loot you can get from each normal hostile and what the PvE chest is going to pay out. Then you have this hostile, which is completely incumbent upon you having the NX-01, the aquatics. Now, the aquatics are all next to the systems where you'll see like a 44 right here. Well, that's the aquatic 44. Look at the payouts of this. So you have the cruiser, which is a regular interceptor, pays out 1.5K tech at level 40. That is significantly higher than what our normal Zindi Reptilian hostile is paying out. Now let's take it a step further than that. So it pays out 1.5 tech, 26 scraps. Let's take it a step further. The big hostile, the enhanced cruiser battleship. Now here's the tricky part about the battleship. The battleship has about a 30% chance of hitting you with a go-home gun. So it's much bigger, but it pays you 10 times the amount of tech and twice the amount of scraps. Compare that to the sheet that we were just looking at. So I'm gonna take this off the screen. Remember the 40 right here is giving us a 52 scrap if we're hitting the big one or 
you know what 26 you're ever hitting the small one how's that compared to the regular hostile around the same actually a little bit higher if it's the battleship one or a little bit lower if it's the interceptor one but you're probably going to be able to punch a little bit higher because you'll be using the nx01 than using a regular ship but that's all in theory so you can see the amount of tech that you're getting for this exchange and what you're getting in terms of scraps in raw loot so as you progress through, you're actually getting multiple ways to get more scrap to speed up that overall like conjunction junction. Shout out to those who remember that. As far as crewing, we know that these areas are dangerous. One thing that I want to point out is that the aquatic hostile has the same setup as the Zindi reptilian so that they, you don't want to run critical builds if you've not done that critical or that floor uh, critical flavor. If you haven't done that, don't run Hugh and Blotor as blow decks. Don't run Khan. On your ship so you need to unlock the critical damage floor and max it out but i would say before that getting the enterprise is big and the biggest reason for me saying the enterprise is important when you're going through and collecting and wanting to hit the nx01 blueprints is again going back to this i'm actually switch this to what my account is i'm a level 49 so let's say i had a tier one enterprise let's say i got it to a you know tier three look at how much it increases how much i'm getting and that's just if i'm doing a single pull with the Enterprise, I'm probably doing a double pull with Zindi now, bringing my 30 day rep gain to 82,000, meaning I completed it in under 100 days. Let's say if we want to go risky with our chest, if we really start investing time and stuff into that, getting 29,000 of the 30 day or uncommons in 30 days, 52,000 of the regular commons. And this is not including any chip flavor bonuses, which as you can see is part of the exotic exchange. Rare chips are bound in PVE chests. Or without the Prime, because if we jump the Prime, people have asked, does the Prime have any value? Yes, the Prime's not amazing, but it will cut down a lot of your work and time. And I want to show you from this perspective. So if I was single pulling and I had the Prime, you see I go up incredibly a lot when it comes to the amount of rares, epics, uncommons, commons, and rep that I get. It does help out. Is it tremendous? I would say no, the Prime's not tremendous, but... You can see here on the calculator that it does have a noticeable effect. And if that effect is valuable to you, you can choose to go for it. So overall, what you want to focus on as you're going through this is focus on getting your rep up, progressing through, doing your Zinni exchange. And then as far as the favors, you focus on par, uh, particle beam delay, Zinni escalation, then the NX-01 blueprints. Then I would say the critical damage floor. And then we're going to start looking at other things that have a lot of general value. Maybe not a ton of value, but you have a lot of good stuff down here, like the Lucky Crystal Miner. I actually do kind of like this for mining more. It's not necessarily mining faster, but mining more. Once they focus on it, but it does have value. You come down to the ones at the bottom, the kinetic bonuses and the energy bonuses don't really have as much value, but that reputation one absolutely does. We talked about trying to progress old loops, but progressing the reputation loop, I think is a great move by Scopely. That's huge. You come up here, the opportunity chips, that's something that you're going to want to have as you get through. Again, we just talked about that in a base conversation. The NX-01 loot, that's huge. Obviously, you're going to want that for your Zindi runs. But then you also see some of the other nice things like critical damage. We always like that. Increasing the efficiency cost of G4 and 5 ship components. That's obviously super valuable to the players in the 4 and the 5-star area. So all these are good. You just want to work on those later, focusing on particle beam delays, any escalation, the NX-01, and then finally critical damage floor. A little bit longer of a video than we normally do but because there's a lot to do with X-Borg. There is just so much to do at one time. And I can't really put a positive spin on that. But at the same time, there is a lot in terms of rewards for you as you're going through this because the favors you eventually get access to, if you focus first on the rep and the ship, the favors are really good long-term for your game. So certainly something that every player should be working towards as a goal. And if you're not there yet, well, we'll help get you there. As always, I appreciate y'all watching. Live long and plunder. Stay safe for the Space Cowboys. Do success. Me, if you need any help, hit me up on Discord. If you're curious where any of the charts are, again, all this is in the volunteer channel of my Discord. Link in the description of the Discord right down below. Right down here in this description. Sorry, YouTube video, not that. Anyway, we outie. We're going to wrap up. I do want to make it clear that I'm going to try to read through the comments of this video because I do realize how big the X Borg and Zindi are. And we will have a video specifically about the NX-01 soon. And just kind of want to give you all a heads up. Okay, here's how you get into this. Here's how you focus on it. Start that at level 38, early in the 40s. And maybe we can keep it from being such the overwhelming thing that it is. An even better outro than the intro.
for the empire and glory to your house.